Uh, hello everyone, Anthony here. Uh, how's everyone doing? Hope you're doing well. Uh, I'm just, uh, it's one of those days, nights, it's 9.13 at night. <clears throat> uh, hey everyone, Anthony here. This, I, I did it again. I recorded a whole like 10 minutes of video and wasn't even recording. Uh, so how, how is everyone doing? Uh, I hate going over, but you know, you gotta do it. How's everyone doing tonight? Uh, it's about 9.30 right now. Uh, I'm doing okay. I've been like, uh, I feel like I'm just repeating myself now. Uh, I'm doing okay. I've been like depressed kinda, but also not depressed, but then also procrastinating because I have like, I have these videos that I want to do and I just procrastinate doing them. I just, I'm not going to get into it. I got into it in the last video that's not recorded, whatever. Let's just move on. So, oh, also I have my second preliminary hearing uh, on Tuesday. It's Sunday night now. So I have that on my mind too. A lot of stuff on my mind. And, uh, all right, so there's this Zero Hedge article. I'll link it in the description. I'm not going to put it here because I don't want to do the, uh, all the work for that. But basically, the title is uh, President Trump Unveils Platinum Plan for Black Americans Designates Antifa KKK as Terrorist Organizations. When we see, like, Black Lives Matter is, like starting all the violence when we look at louisville when we look at like uh all these other uh riots and stuff you see a ton of black people starting the violence and looting and robbing and and all that and thinking that it's okay and and black lives matter is a terrorist organization but we see this this platinum plan that donald trump is uh proposing is uh it's just being used to to garner votes from the black community and uh, get it to appeal to the black community to get votes. Uh, but it's just sad to see because, well, let's just get into the article. I'm, I'm trying to think of all the stuff that I said in the last video and, and it's not gonna work out. So I'm, whatever good stuff I said in the last video, it's in the past. So article starts out, uh, President Donald Trump's re-election campaign released a platinum plan that outlines promises he is making to black Americans over the next four years if he remains president. Uh, as the Epoch Times' Mimi Win Lee details below, the plan seeks to uplift black communities through in part an investment of about $500 billion. Uh, another thing that's interesting, the same day uh, yesterday is when this was released, the same day uh, Bank of America issued a uh, $2 billion bond to fight race inequality uh, to help build black communities and uh, educate black people, uh, mortgage lending, construction loans, financing uh, for medical professionals, uh, supply chain financing, uh, equity investments in uh, black communities, all this stuff. And uh, well, here's one thing that I point out from the last video. Uh, when I, like, I think, cause we have like a lot of homeless people in, in Scranton now, uh, there's one road in particular that I passed by and just earlier tonight, there's people sleeping on the side of the road uh, in front of a beer distributor uh, and and this one road, there's always like homeless people. I don't know if there's like a drug shelter there or something on that road, but uh, there. this is from Statista, uh, estimated number of homeless people in the United States in 2019 by race, 270,607 uh, 270, uh, white and 225,735 African-American homeless people. So there's an overwhelming, well, there's a larger portion of uh, white people that end up homeless, but you don't see specific programs helping white people. Uh, 
like this to start businesses or, or schooling or get into college or get jobs or anything like that. The Trump campaign announced late Friday, after years of neglect by Democrat politicians, so they have to put that Democrat politicians in there because they're trying to get black votes away from Joe Biden and onto Donald Trump. So that's why they have to uh, paint Democrats in a bad light and open up with that. And I'm not saying Democrats shouldn't be painted in a ba bad light. I very much think that they do, but this is just the wording that makes me see that this is just uh, Donald Trump. Not saying that Donald Trump isn't gonna follow through with this uh, proposal, but it's definitely geared towards him getting uh, black votes. So after years of neglect by Democrat politicians, black Americans have finally found a true advocate in President Trump, who is working tirelessly to deliver uh, greater opportunity, security, prosperity, and fairness to their communities. While Joe Biden takes black voters for granted and even questions their blackness if they dare to support conservative ideals, President Trump is working hard to earn the black vote through his platinum plan. And the reason that they mention uh, that Joe Biden questions uh, if people are really black, if they dare to support conservative ideals is because uh, Joe Biden said this video is like a month older, maybe longer now. It's been passed around the internet so many times now, but Joe Biden said something to the effect of like, if you don't vote for me, then you're not really black. Uh, try, him trying to say that, uh, that he supports black people or whatever. So anyway, the president's daughter, senior White House advisor Ivanka Trump posted details of the plan on uh, Twitter late Friday. Uh, I'm not going to read this whole like infographic, but it says the platinum plan, uh, President Trump's pillars, opportunity by achieving historic employment levels for black Americans, as well as increasing access to capital for new businesses. President Trump has been committed to ensuring all black Americans can achieve the American dream. And this is all like, this isn't how a free market works because you take away from, from able body. When you make plans like this, you take away from the able bodied and the uh, meritocracy, the people that actually have merit and are the best suited for these jobs and businesses. You put them out of the workforce because now you're giving it to minorities. So, Overall, the world as a whole, the United States as a whole, is at a loss from these affirmative action and promoting black business uh, uh, things. And then also these people, these black people that uh, participate in these programs, they don't have to work as hard or study as hard as a white person. So they're not even going to have an incentive or a reason to uh to learn as much because they're gonna they have a better chance of getting the job so there's less competition in the workforce so they don't have to learn and and be that good as good at their job uh so security uh by signing into law the celebrated first step act uh president trump has brought common uh sense criminal justice reform to the american people for the first time in decades, ensuring that our streets and communities are safe for families and business owners. So that's a whole layer that that I'm not even going to touch on for why blacks commit crimes and everything like that. But it's some ideological stuff, some childhood stuff, some family stuff. Uh, so prosperity, as the first president to provide long-term funding to historically black colleges and universities, the administration continues to seek immediate and generational advancement for black Americans. Uh, fairness, as demonstrated through his actions to initiate investment in opportunity zones, as well as address health disparities, wage gaps, and necessary education reforms, President Trump works every day to advance a fair and just America for the black community. And it's not a fair and just America for the black community. This proposal is giving advantages to the black community that is not fair at all to America as a whole because there's more people in America than, than just the black community. President Donald Trump's promise to black America over four years 
increased access to capital in black communities by almost $500 billion. And where does this money come from? Well, white people are still the majority of the working class in the United States. They're still the majority taxpayers in the United States. So it's funding white people, funding black people to funding black people's businesses and jobs and uh, education and, and all this stuff. So it's like your funding as a parent, your funding, your tax money is funding a black person to get education, get college, get scholarships, get community support and everything like this to compete against your son or daughter in the workforce. So you're paying for your own child not to have that good of a future. Uh, and all these advantages given to black people with quotas and scholarships and everything like that uh, gives them a significant advantage. And that's not like racism or anything to say that if if a white person ends up, if their son or daughter ends up being more qualified for the job, more uh, hardworking, more knowledgeable, let's say a doctor knows in and out if they want to be a foot doctor, knows in and out of all feet and everything like that, and has all this college debt and everything, does all this hard work, and then they just lose their job to a black person uh, who, who has received all this help and guidance and support when none of that is available uh, to white people. So creating 500 new black owned businesses. So what I wanted to say about this, creating 500,000 new black owned businesses. So let's just say $500 billion uh, divided by 500,000. So that'd be like, let's say that all of this money, $500 billion, let's say that or did I do 500 million? Yeah, so that's $1 million per business, let's say if this whole 500 billion goes to black community uh, per business. But the thing with businesses, you can't just give someone a business. They have to be, uh, they have to be able to run the business and operate it efficiently and make a profit and do all this stuff on their own. You can't just like, I can't just give you a, a knitting business and you're gonna run this business and, and it's gonna be a good business. And if these people were really qualified to run businesses and uh, good at it and everything like that, they would uh, be able to convince a bank to give them a loan and they would be able to, uh, see, I said all of this much better in, in my first clip, but they'd be responsible enough and work from the ground up just like every other white person works from the ground up uh, majority of every other white person works from the ground up to uh, build themselves up and everything. So you can't just give things to people and expect them to care about their businesses and everything like that. Like if I give someone a car, they're not going to care about that car as much as if they worked hard to achieve it and they need that car for, for to, they need that job for their, that car for their livelihood. If these black people don't need these businesses for these livelihoods, for their livelihood, if they just get handed this business, get handed this money, and then this money and stuff just keeps going, gets poured into them, they're not gonna, uh, they're not gonna need to to, they're not gonna need these businesses. They're just gonna take these businesses for granted and not be incentivized to to run them well. Increase access to capital in black communities by almost 100 billion. Uh, so then that's that's getting loans, I guess. I don't, I'm not sure if they're just gonna hand black people money, it would be like loans, I guess. Safe urban neighborhoods with highest po policing standards. So black people already don't like the police. So uh, giving money to a neighborhood isn't gonna, uh, make that neighborhood have less crime or anything like that. Uh, it's gonna be down to the community and neighborhood himself for having, uh, it's gonna be down to the actual people that live in the neighborhoods. Uh, commit to working on a second step act. Uh, access to better education and job training programs. 
give black churches the ability to compete for federal resources for their community. I don't know like what happened with separating church from state and having churches just uh, go by donations and fundraisers. And this way, when churches work for donations and fundraisers, they're incentivized because their money is, they're incentivized to help their community more because their money and profits is coming from the amount of help that they actually do to the community. Uh, do for the community, bring better and tailored healthcare to address historic disparities. So one thing about healthcare is that black people don't like going to white doctors. So in order to bring better healthcare, uh, black people, and I, I've been to doctors with black people and talked to them about all this and everything. Uh, one of my neighbors down the street uh, has a heart condition and he was telling me how He's like, oh, don't put that in my arm. Don't give me any advice. Like, I, you're a white doctor. You're just, you're trying to kill me and all this and went through like this whole hassle. So in order to get better healthcare to black people, you're going to have to uh, have black doctors. And those black doctors are also going to have to know what they're talking about and not recommend weed and all these like unproven, uh, unproven and unstudied treatments that all black people love for some reason. Uh, immigration policy that protects jobs, American jobs, uh, advanced home ownership opportunities and enhance financial literacy in the black community. Yeah, so advanced home ownership opportunities, like what are you gonna do? Like take homes away from white people? Like how are you gonna give more opportunities to black people to buy homes? Well, you're gonna increase funding for loans this way when you increase funding for loans, then these banks don't have to be so picky about choosing uh, people with good credit ratings that uh, that will likely be able to pay the loans back because there's less risk involved. If you're just giving a bank money to hand out loans, uh, they don't really have to worry about making their money back. Now you're artificially manipulating the home market by favoring black communities and giving, pouring all this money into black communities for loans to buy houses and everything like that. Me, I'm 34. I Yeah, I can buy a house with cash, but seriously, with like cryptocurrency was my only way out. I didn't graduate college. I didn't have any support or anywhere to get a GED. I didn't know how this whole system worked or anything, uh, how to get into college, how to go about getting my GED or anything like that. Like all this stuff was just this huge like uh, barrier that I had to cross that I was never able to cross. There's just all these steps that you have to go through. My battery's gonna die. Uh, again, I was recording and, and I wasn't recording when I was talking, but uh, I was just, I don't remember where I left off, but I was just talking about like, oh, like I, I worked like real hard and I, I would never accept like government ex assistance for a house. I remember when I was uh, like 18 to 20 and, and a little bit older and stuff, seeing on Facebook uh, friends that I went to high school with posting about like shaming people uh, for being on food stamps and everything like that. And I never wanted to be that. I never wanted to be a burden to society by accepting government assistance and money and all that. And that's another thing with like black communities. I think like, and this is kind of off topic, but I see like these women sleeping with these men, like men love pussy, men love uh, procreating, recreating and having sex and being in relationships. Black men are no different than white men with that. And these women, these women sleep with these, uh, sleep with these black men that have no jobs and are drug dealers and whatever. And they're like, oh, he's struggling. The, the community is so racist. Like you have to feel sorry for the black man and, and all this stuff. But like, I can't even imagine like a girl sleeping with me if I didn't have a job or money or income or anything like that because like girls girls shame you if you don't have that stuff. That's how I always like that's how I was raised and grew up or whatever like don't have a job, don't be able to and not be able to raise a family. You're not going to be married and have kids and and all that. All right. Oh, what was the other way? Uh advanced home ownership uh 
opportunities and enhance financial literacy in the black community. And again, this is all stuff that's going to be have to like black people aren't going to trust white people if there's a white person teaching them unless there's like years of trust built up and whatever. That's why I have like my black my black family, uh, the black family that I'm friends with, their kids are like we have six years of relationship built up. So they trust me and, and know that I'm not doing bad to them uh, so I can help them. But uh but black people aren't going to listen to white teachers about finance or anything like that. And also black people don't practice deferred gratification and they spend all this money on clothes and jewelry and, and getting their hair done uh, and all that. And, and they don't save money. Uh, and I thought about this like years ago when I was with Lala with uh, gold jewelry and, and I was thinking about... Uh, blacks in the past with jewelry. I think I was thinking about Egyptians with their jewelry and everything. And as uh, jewelry is like as a status symbol. Uh, and I think uh, jewelry and clothes and whatever are status symbols and same with hair. Well, with women's hair, it's also to, uh, to get them attractive so that men will want to be with them and everything like that. But uh, but I think they're just more focused on these status symbols and everything and that might be like inherently built into their brains and culture and all that to to buy nice cars that they can't afford and jewelry and whatever uh, for status symbol stuff. Uh, onshoring manufacturing to advance jobs and development opportunities for black owned businesses. Uh, oh, that's another thing kind of off topic too I was thinking about is like, and, and this goes against the whole like spiel of uh, of jobs are being taken away from Mexicans and by Mexicans and by having borders open and everything like that. But if unemployment rates are historically low, uh, it hasn't been to like the 40s or something. And the reason in the or 30s, the reason that unemployment rates were like three, three and a half percent uh, back then was because of the war and we needed to create all these jobs to fund the war, to build uh, equipment and stuff that we needed to fight the war. Uh, but Donald Trump, there was no war and unemployment rates are at record lows, uh, three, three and a half percent. So that kind of makes me question the whole like, oh, immigrants are taking our jobs and whatever. Can you really argue that if uh, unemployment rates are so low? But really like, Black people are taking our jobs, and and this proposal is is giving it to them. Uh, there's more stuff here. Uh, I'm not gonna read through it. Uh, I'll read through it off camera. One of the things here says make Juneteenth the national holiday. Uh, prosecute the KKK and Antifa as terrorist organizations and make lynching a national hate crime. And there's still like no lynchings evidence or anything of lynchings uh at all like i in the last in in my history looking looking through the history that i've seen in the past however many years i've been alive i haven't seen any lynchings happen there was some kid that uh actually i think he they ruled it a suicide and i think there was quite a bit of evidence to uh see that he actually did commit suicide but the media took that as uh as a lynching when it wasn't uh, fuel black farmers and access to healthy foods to address food disparities uh, favorable trade deals to bring uh, sorry this image is a little bit small favorable trade deals to bring back manufacturing jobs and health black black contractors farmers uh, inventors and consumers defend religious liberty and african-american churches that lift the conscious uh, of our nation uh, collaborate with cities and counties to address mental illness and substance abuse uh, so there's another thing with business too and donald trump knows a lot about this uh, is negotiating and making deals uh, with businesses to uh, deals with businesses that are beneficial to both businesses um, and there's like the art of the deal and negotiating and all that. Uh, blacks have access to all these books that like, like this, it's just ridiculous to me. Like, I don't understand it that 
like everyone has equal access to any of these books and you can even go on the pirate bay and torrent some of these books and and steal them or whatever like i s stole software when i was younger uh because i needed to learn how to use this software so i could get a job and uh a job using this software and i taught myself how to use it and everything like there's ways to teach yourself like everything you don't need schools uh these days all you need is motivation and and a will to do it and and all that all right the platinum plan pdf uh is based on four core values opportunity security prosperity and fairness i'm going just reading the rest of the zero ed hedge article uh then finishing up here uh the plan seeks to add some three million new jobs for the black communities create 500,000 new black owned businesses and increase access to capital in black communities by almost 500 billion. Part of the plan includes bringing back manufacturing jobs to the United States to advance jobs and businesses and having immigration policies that protects American jobs. It also calls to increase activity in opportunity zones, including benefits for local hires. Trump is also promising access to better education and job training opportunities and will work with advanced home ownership opportunities and enhance financial literacy in the black community, uh, according to the plan. And this another thing, I bet you won't see anything in the news from the black community thanking Donald Trump for this plan. You won't see like, uh, all right, actually directly under this uh, link is a picture of black people standing up and clapping for Donald Trump. But uh, so that just takes what I just said, like, uh, out of it. But, uh, but I think they're just going to forget about this in the future too, the same way black people forgot about affirmative action and, and uh, minority scholarships and all this other stuff. They don't talk about that. They just uh, keep demanding more and more and more and and are ungrateful uh so maybe they're grateful now from what this uh picture shows but with all this black lives matter stuff you don't see any of these black lives matter people uh thanking donald trump for affirmative not donald trump but thanking americans for affirmative action and all this stuff uh over the next four years, Trump promises to lower the cost of health care and bring better and tailored health care to address historic disparities for the black community. The president will also ensure that black churches can compete for federal resources and defend religious. This is stuff that I already talked about on my own. So at the Black Voices at a Black Voices for Trump campaign rally in Atlanta, Georgia, Trump characterized his platinum plan as a black empower empowerment plan. Uh, and warned black voters against supporting his opponent, uh, former Vice President Joe Biden. Though black Americans have traditionally been shut out of opportunities to grow our own businesses and to grow our own businesses and create generational wealth, uh, President Trump is working hard to give access to the American dream. Uh, black votes for Black Votes for a Trump Advisory Board said in a statement, President Trump is a businessman and understands that pride, community, and dedication are built through entrepreneurship. Uh, and then this thing with generational wealth, like it takes, it's not just something you're given, like it takes so much, it takes the parents saving money and and not and, and putting money towards raising their children and giving their children better future and everything like that, uh, that, and not buying fancy cars and clothes and whatever on themselves. It's like the parent living poorly so that their child can have, uh, the best future. Like my grandfather was like this their whole, his whole life. Like he wears like ratty, holy t-shirts and pants from like the seventies still, uh, I could go into so many stories about my grandfather. Like he used to scream and yell to the point where myself and my mom and uh, were traumatized for not cleaning your plate and eating every single piece of food that you put on your plate. Uh, and and even me today, like that's how I save money and stuff. Like I don't throw out food and and uh and you've seen like my freezer and and my cooking and everything especially if you follow me on instagram 
Like I, I don't throw out food because that's just throwing out money. Uh, and same with like buying clothes and stuff like that. Uh, anyway, that's the end of this video. Take care, guys. Let me know what you think in the comments. And uh, goodbye.